So today I'm um, going to try and get in the um, stalks on the cherries. Um, that's the main aim for today. Um, painted the reflections on the bowl yesterday and I've come back now and I can see that some of the colour has been soaked into the um, uh, canvas. So that will need um, oiling out and um, some of the, the shadows will need darkening. All of this area here will need glazing once the painting is dry. So there's not much I can do on this today. It needs to dry before I can do any of that. And then I'm going to, so today I'm going to work on these um, stalks on the cherries. So I've got um, a warm white, a titanium white, um, cadmium yellow, a lemon yellow, yellow ochre, um, terra rosa, um, transparent oxide red, cobalt blue, ultramarine blue, green gold, black and phthalo blue. Um, I'm not quite sure which of these colours I'm going to need um, to get the stalks, the colour of the stalks, so I'll just put them all on um, so I don't have to mess about getting um, tubes of paint out while I'm filming. Um, the other thing I've got is, because obviously the original cherries um, perished, I've put a few more cherries in the bowl um, so that I can judge the colours from those. Um, but in terms of judging the positions of the stalks, I have got a photograph up on the computer of the original setup just so that I know that the stalks are all in the right place. So I'll be taking the colours from the, the actual still life setup and I'll be taking the positions from the photograph. Um, um, so I'm going to try and mix up. I'm going to start from left to right and work my way across. There's a really bright green stalk here. Um, so I'm going to mix that up now. Now, there's two ways you can mix up greens. Um, well, there's several ways you can mix up greens, actually, depending on what you want. But um, this is quite a good way. So take the lemon yellow. And and obviously black is a type of blue. So if we mix some black in with that, immediately we get a green. Now, just let me check all this against... So it's actually a bit quite harsh acidic green. This green gold's a great colour. Thank you. Um it needs probably lightening a little bit. These stalks are really brightly lit. Now if I want to really zap the green and make it greeny, really green, um, I'll add some of that tiny, tiny touch of the fallow green and it, um, it really does um, taint the colour. It's a really powerful pigment. That's a really vivid green. How's that look on the canvas? That's not looking too bad. It's a little bit more blue I think. Let me have a look against there. It's really ever so difficult to tell. Get it on. I, get, I can always I can always adjust this once it's um, in place. Actually, I'm just thinking about this now. Before I start, what I might do is um, mix up a colour for the shadow side of the stalks. Um, it's very very fine. It's going to be a very very fine line, but I just need something to. to um, Put the shadow side in. So I'm going to take some transparent oxide red and mix it in with this. Tiniest bit of black. It needs to be darker than that. Maybe some blue. Okay. And the shadow side is quite a bit darker than the background, so. I'm trying to avoid going pure black because um, there's so much black in the painting as it is. Let's see how that compares. That's like a really dark green made up of um, ultramarine blue, um, transparent oxide red and some of the green mixture I'd already got. I think it needs to be even more blue. Okay, so I'm going to use this colour to mark in um, the um, the stalks. 
and then I'll work my way across um, and then I'll come back and add the highlights to it. I think that's probably the best way of doing it. You could always do the, the highlight, the, the lit side of the stalk first and then come back and paint in the shadow but I, I think the, the light side's the, the bit that we want to stand out so it'll be easier painting that on afterwards. So just like yesterday I've got a small pointed brush what size is this? Um, size one, and it's a. Uh, what's the name of it? It's a rosemary uh, pointed round. Okay, so it's just to the left of this cherry, and it kind of comes up to here. The top of these stalks, there's a bit, but the cherry was um, attached to the branch with a little sort of stump. Okay, there's not much of a shadow on this one. And then there's one from this, that goes quite high, it's almost vertical, not quite vertical. That's actually quite a lot of green on that shadow of this one, so I'm mixing a little bit more of that phthalo green in. And this. So I'm kind of judging where the stroke's going to go before I put it on. Don't want to commit and then find I've got to get rid of that mark. It's not perfectly vertical, so I don't want to be doing. And it tapers a little bit. So what I could do with doing is, as I paint the line on, just ease, ease back a little bit with the pressure on the brush. It's already got a bit of a wobble on it, that line has. I'm holding the brush a long way back. I need more oil on the brush as it flows better. Because the canvas has dried, it um, might have been better putting some oil on the actual canvas first to get the paint to flow. Two, there's like a sort of wishbone type stalk coming up here and that comes down at an angle down this way and stops about here. So let's go from there to about here. curved enough that isn't it does curve a bit more but when I paint the highlight in I'll be able to adjust that there's hardly any shadow on this one let me just correct that that goes from here need more oil on what I might do actually I'll do this carefully I want to take, take this bit off at the top with a cotton bud.
better. I want that really faint so I can um, get it in the right place. I'm holding the brush a long way back. This curve's got to be even. That's better. Really faint that curve there. And then it comes this this comes down, it's like a wishbone. That's almost straight. more shadow up there and there's definitely more shadow on this part in fact it's nearly all shadows are there any highlight on it at all um, and it's almost straight and it, it does change in colour actually thicker at the top. Again I'm shaping the brush so that it's chisel shape. It's not the smallest brushes I've got. I want there to be enough paint on to actually do the line. If you use really tiny brushes they tend not to hold very much paint and you're having to um, keep going back to the paint. At the end there's a, um, actually a little bit of a stump on the end. I do need to make this thicker. Probably okay like that now. Um, it does change colour slightly towards the end. I'm going to just do that now while I'm on it. So it becomes more of an ochre um, brown. So I'm going to mix that in with some of this green that I've got so that the value doesn't change too much. I'm going to go over the, the bottom part of this stem here. So it's from about here onwards. And the paint will mix on the surface so it'll gradually change colour. Very, very subtle. And there's the same up here actually. So I'm just laying that ochre over the top and it's actually mixing with the paint that's already on. It's a bit haphazard. Okay, you barely notice that, but it's worth doing. Um, right, next one. I'll go along and get more marked in and then go back and adjust them. So the next one, again, is very, very, very fine. And that is on this cherry here. And there are there's actually two joined together so this one comes up here and then this one is next to it and they come to probably in line with where that is so that comes down and the paint's got a bit of camsol in it that's why it's running so much There is a slight curve on it as well. 
like before. I'll take that top part off. These cotton buds are great for just wiping, wiping back while the paint's still wet. You can get quite quite detailed corrections with them. Is there and then there's the one at the side so then there's a little bit of a stumpy bit of the stalk and the one at the side runs almost parallel down into here I just realize I've just dragged some of that white she's still wet lift that with a knife. But this stalk does cut across it so it's it's not at the end of the world because it, I'm going to have to paint this bit anyway. It goes in there, it just needs changing colour. Okay, um, This one does. Okay, now there's another stalk at the back of this that's from another chair that curves over that way. Now I've got to be careful, I don't want all of these at exactly the same height. Um, so I'm going to, I'll have to raise this one up a little bit. Um, maybe bring this one down here. So this next one I want a little bit higher. Maybe up here. I mean they are actually fairly similar in height but that's really curved. There. And it ends directly above this cherry. Slightly higher. This part's approximately there. And actually, the shadow, it's got more of that ochre colour in this um, shadow side at the top. Uh, Trying to strike the balance between having enough oil in the paint so that it flows, but not so much that it it, it spreads and runs. Sometimes, if there's too much oil on your brush, you'll touch the brush to the canvas, and it'll just form a little puddle.
And then just the bottom part of this has got a really um, ochre colour. And, and the thing is when you're adding, so here at the end of this stalk, um, the colour of the end of the stalk there is brown, the same on all of them, they're kind of a, an ochre colour. And this, this is the shadow I'm painting in. There's going to be a highlight, a bright green highlight on this side. Um, when I come to paint this end where there's where it's broken, it's like a brown ochre colour. If I just paint that yellow ochre, it's going to look really flat. I'll put some on now, you'll see. It's going to look really, really flat. I mean, I've actually put um, quite a lot of um, terra rosa in that. Sometimes what it's worth doing is if you have an area that's tiny, like that, and is a certain colour, put a really high chrome a touch of colour in there and it will just bring it alive. Just a, ta so a colour that you probably wouldn't use on a big area. Really high chrome, like I'm using this Terra Rosa now. Um, and I'm going to, obviously I'm going to paint the, the light side in as well. So I've got a little bit of yellow ochre, sort of neat yellow ochre and a tiny bit of this Terra Rosa. I'll work over it and that'll really make it pop that, that bit of um, stalk at the end. Right now directly below this here there's another it, there's another sort of wishbone type shape. And it's quite a bit in the foreground, towards the foreground, so I want it quite bold. Um, and that comes down into this um, cherry here that's sort of hidden. It comes up, it cuts across this one and next to it, and, and stops around about here, just above the top of that one, so it goes to about here. This is why, when I was painting the, uh, so that's the, the sort of, where the two join. When I was painting these cherries, you're probably thinking, I spent so long fussing about the cherries being in the correct position and, and now that's paying off because I can refer to the photograph, I can get these stalks in exactly the right place. I mean I knew that the cherries would perish and then trying to paint this if they were all in the wrong position just wouldn't work. So this comes down into here and it bows, a very slight bow on it. Bow, I mean it's a very slight arc. It's almost all in shadow down here. And then again, a little bit thicker at the top. And then it splits and goes across to this one here. I've got to be aware of this white. I'm already beginning to drag some of it. There. Now what you can do, you can turn the canvas so that you're bringing your stroke down like that um, rather than trying to paint. That's kind of um, a little bit um, awkward turning the brush heel through that angle. To turn, turn the canvas and just you could do a line like that which is much more natural. And sometimes I will do that, I'll turn the canvas around. I mean, I'm actually going to put, twist my arm around so that I can get to this better now. It's a much better way of holding the brush. The way you hold the brush, 
the way you make the strokes can really affect how accurate you are. So as I was saying yesterday, I'm trying to keep the tip of the brush perpendicular. Oh, I need some more ochre in this for this shadow. Keep the brush per perpendicular so that I'm and I'm holding it quite a way back, just enough so I can make this this movement. Now then, this needs to be a little bit thicker here. And the reason I'm going over these lines is I'm trying to get when when you you do the first pass with the line it tends to get little bumps and lumps on on the line and I'm trying to go along the line and correct them as I go see there's a little bit there that's a little bit thicker so I mean I could do two things I could wipe that off and do it again or I could even it out by starting at this end now th and this is quite a thick stalk Too bad now. Again, I don't know if the camera is picking up enough detail to, sh to show what I'm doing. I'm basically trying to straighten the edge of this stalk that I'm painting. So there's a little irregularity in it, a little bump in it. That's not bad, that's better now. better. So that looks perfectly straight. Um, and then above here there's obviously there's the stalk and there's a bit of shadow which I'm just going to roughly mark in and then I'll know where that goes when I come to paint. The, it's a slightly different colour. Now behind this stalk there's another stalk and that goes quite another sort of wishbone type one that goes quite high. Um, and I'm, what I'm going to do with this one is I'm going to um, get a soft brush and just soften it so just just I'll paint it in and then I'll soften the edge of it because it I want it to, to appear as though it's in the background so it's almost like um, when a camera with you get a depth of field um, where the background's slightly blurred Too far one way. This is marked in. I don't know if this is going to work. I just need a very fine brush and I'm going to try and um, soften that now. Um, dry brush. Okay, that worked. And then again, there's another. Um, this this side of it comes down, finishes above here. It's slightly lighter. A little bit.
loads and loads of paint on the brush. I don't want it to just be a bit of a puddle of paint, just in case I get in the wrong place. Okay, so that goes down. Um, And then, again, I'm going to try and soften that a little bit. Just put it out of focus fractionally. I don't want that harsh edge on this. these at the back. There will be a highlight on that side, so it's just this back edge I'm going to soften. There. Right, there's only a couple more that are at the back, so I'm going to paint them in now. And then there's a couple of stalks that cross over at the front. And again, this is another background one and that comes out of here, and it goes quite high. This one does up to about here. So oh, these shadow sides, it, um, you hardly see them in, in the finished painting, they won't be that noticeable, but it's great because it's providing, by putting these in first, I'm getting a guide um, to where the um, highlights are going to go. And it's much easier painting along the line that's already in than painting something that isn't there. So now I'm having to uh, um, think carefully about where I'm going to place these lines. When I go back to doing the, um, the highlights, obviously I'm going to have a guide in place. I can use these lights to guide where the highlights will go. The stalk's quite um, an important part, feature of this painting. When I set, set up the still life, it was the stalks that that really I felt gave the painting quite a lot of life. Um, they're almost like dancing above the cherries. It's um, got a lot. Of, gives it gives the painting character. So I don't want to rush this bit. Right now here, um, there's a, a stalk that comes up out of here somehow and then kind of kinks and goes across and in, into this cherry. that bit. And then it's another wishbone type one but it, it, this one's a bit awkward because it comes across and then goes down. Now remember I've got my brush sort of chisel edge so I'm going to have to turn my brush as I go across. Goes across there. Now I'm turning my brush at an angle so that I can do this bit so it comes round a corner and then down here. Like that. This is all quite dark here. That's 
really dark because well, I'm obviously on the dark side of the background. The background is darker here on this side, yet the stalk is still darker than the background. So I'm still making those comparisons. It's better like that. And it, the same colour again. Okay, now we've just got um, some stalks that are sitting in front. I'll paint them in. So there's one that's in front of this cherry here and it comes down to the, to the bowl. It's going to need a lot of work with highlights on there. There, and then there's another one behind it. it comes out of this cherry, comes up, and stops here. It goes straight across the highlight. I'm just going to have to be careful with that white there at the moment. I don't want to drag that down here. The white's still wet. White, the white takes a long time to dry, so if I paint over it, it'll just drag it, drag it down here, and I don't want that. So I'm just avoiding it. I will have to paint over it at some point, but. Carefully see if I can eat into it. Yeah, it goes like that. Okay, that's there, and um, I think is that all of them? There's one or two other bits of highlight in there but um, nothing with any shadow on I don't think okay just looking at this now in, in here all this scroll it's going to need more work and it's so, just soaked straight into the canvas right I'm going to go um, and start adding the the light side now so I've got this bright green one thing I do need to do is make sure my brush is really clean. I can't see there's some colour in there. Get all the gamps on off. Tiny drop of oil. Now, there's a lot of subtlety in these, so there will be some adjustments to be made. So but I'll just put the light side in first. using that shadow as my guide and because that's still wet when I run this um, white colour over two colours will blend together Actually, when I look at this, it gets thicker towards the bottom. Okay, now there's a bit of yellow towards the top. So, I'm going to use just pure cadmium yellow. Make sure I've got no gamsol on here. If I put this on and there's any gamsol, it's just going to make a blob. I want a tiny bit at the top and I'm going to try and drag that down into the green. It's 
See how I've dragged that, and as I drag it down, it begins to mix. So I'll do the same again. Tiny, it's just pure cadmium yellow. This is what I was saying when you've got really small areas like this, going for a really high chroma colour can sometimes be really effective. It needs to go a bit higher actually. Okay, I'm turning the brush off. I've just got um, a clean brush. Now what I'll do is I'll just smooth that in. Blend that into the green there. Now I need, um, at the top of these I've got um, a, a little stump where they've been picked. Um, so I'm going to get, um, I might get some burnt umber for this. I haven't got any on the moment. Shadow where the, uh, that stump is. So let me find some burnt umber. Just dodging around the camera. I must spend that much time looking for paint in this box. Let me have a look. Burnt umber. I'm going to put that next to the transparent oxide red here. That would be quite good for uh, these stumpy bits at the top. Again, this is darker than the background, so let's see how it do need a really dark colour now. Go for the black. And then the top is it, it, it's actually um, part of this uh, brown, but it's almost like a pink. So I'm going to get some of this warm white, and a tiny bit of transparent oxide red. That will make this very light pink. And it's quite opaque. I'm not um, going to put any oil into this because I want this. Uh, I want this to be very opaque. And this is catching the light. This top of this stalk. Something like that, and I'm, just, I'm not being fussy. I'm allowing the paint to do its thing here. I'm um, just blobbing it on, and it will sit because it's opaque. It'll sit and catch the light in different ways. Okay, and that needs to a tiny bit more on the other side. Just even it out. Something like that. Okay, um, right, next one. So we repeat the process. Now this is more of a bluey green. I'm going to just adjust this one slightly. At the top, like a bluey green that fades into this um, yellowy green. at the top first. Again, much lighter than the background. All oh, I'm doing at the moment is I'm just adjusting the green a little bit because I felt it was too dark against the background. Um, 
And you've got to remember these stalks, even though they're very tiny, they're cylinders. So you've got to have the shadow, there's almost like a, a local colour, and then there's the highlight side. Very, very um, tiny lines and tiny differences. But if you can try to think about that while you're doing it, you're creating a, a tall, thin cylinder. Why that goes into the cherry here, it's really light. I'm just leaning back to take a look at how this looks. Okay. What I might do is just that hasn't mixed that well. I need a better brush than that. Um, just that shadow and highlight side, at the moment they look like two lines running parallel. I'm just going to try and, if I can, to drag them into each other. That's a bit better. Um, I'll come back and do the top of that in a moment. I'm just going to go on to this one here. Now this one's actually a lot lighter. And get some warm white and mix it into this green. It's almost white. Because it's facing directly into the light, this, this is. Now this one can afford to be a little bit thicker, but most of the stalk is lit up. So I'm using that shadow as a guide. to make see if that looks regular there's no sort of irregularities in it there is a little bit here you may think I'm being really really fussy over these um, this area but it does make a difference Taking a lot of care. Okay, that's not too bad now. At the top, I'm going to do the same sort of thing. I'm going to add some ochre and a little bit of yellow um, and a touch of white because it's still very light. And begin to drag that in, drag that into the lighter green.
OK. Um, and that goes almost a ready colour. So I'm going to use some really pure. Hang on, not really pure. I'm going to get some um, high chroma, um, cadmium yellow, a tiny bit of um, terra rosa. It's going to give me a really strong pink. Pinky orange. I only want a little bit of it because that high chroma really, really pops out there. Okay, and then I'm going to get um, a very fine brush and just soften it because it is at the background. This is. Just soften the edges a little tiny bit. Make sure this is dry before I stick it on. I'm just touching it against that shadow colour and it's gradually just blending into it, just touching the brush against it. Okay, it needs to be a bit more pink. So yellow that is, so I'll put some pink on the so I'll get some of this uh, warm white again, wrong brush. Make sure I get the right brush. This is the one. Some warm white. And turn this bit of transparent oxide red again, makes this pink. It's quite a cool pink. Maybe I need a little bit more. So I've got this cool pink now, and that's going to go on the highlight side here. That's not too bad. Okay, next bit. Um, actually, there's a bit of um, bit of the transparent oxide red or pinky colour, not quite as bright at the base of this stalk. This one here. As it turns into the light, so that that end there that turns into the light. This is in shadow. That turns into the light. Okay. Next one is this, this pair here, and they are very bright. There's hardly any shadow side to this, so it's going to be that really vivid green. Um, okay. colour does change as it goes down and it crosses this other cherry, it becomes more of an oak colour, but what I'll do is I'll mix that over the top as I've, I'll put this on first and then go over with an oak at the bottom part of the, the stalk. Some of this uh, red on the chose is still a little bit tacky, so I don't want to get that mixed in. See, mixing in already. I'm going to clean my brush before I put it back into that uh, green because it will just pollute the green. And I've got quite a pure colour there. In fact, there is already a little tiny bit of the red in there. So you have to clean your brushes in between, um, try and keep the colours pure if you can. Oh no, see what's happened there. I'm going to have to repaint that cherry now, just that, just that side and the brush has got some gamsol on it and it's just um, spread. See how it ran? I'll leave that now for the moment because that's going to just get worse. Do 
this other one. And again I've got this white I've got to contend with. I'm mixing a little bit of the ochre in with this green because it's a slightly different tint. to um, blend that shadow in. I must keep remembering to um, dry my brushes in between. I'm just softening that boundary between the um, the shadow side and the light side. I don't want it to just look like two lines that have been drawn on. Put that in a bit more. I think what's happening is some of the gamps are still spread up to that. I just have to leave that for a while. Okay, so up here we've got all of this stalk, um, and there's the stalks makes them this dark, dark brown. It comes over there. It's the same as on that previous one, we've got different shades of um, reds and browns in there. Pinks. I'm just suggesting it again, letting the paint do its thing. Put some pinks over the top. Again, it's a few different varieties of um, colour, but I'm just I'm just kind of dabbing it on just to let the to create that rough sort of effect. And then there's um, the highlight, which is the, the very bright pink. Um, 